Hi, English 1301 students, it's Dr. Murray. I wanted to make you this video in which I talk about one particular ad um, to give you a sense of how you might approach your ads for essay number one. So let me quickly review. You wanna choose ads for a product or service, not a public service announcement, not a parody of an ad. Um, and you want to choose ads that are pathos driven, um, which both means that it's largely that the appeals made in the ad are largely emotional, but also, you know, it's, it's got an absence of, of logos, um, of, of which, which what that amounts to in an ad is essentially that they're not talking about the actual qualities of the product. You know, if it's Cheerios, they're not saying, you know, it's good for you. It tastes good. You know, there are, there, you know, we include this much in the box. This is what the price is. These are all the actual logical, factual qualities of the product. If they're talking about the intimacy between a grandmother and a child and relating that to Cheerios, that's not logical. That is a pathos appeal that's trying to have those good feelings rub off on the cereal and, and that you equate those feelings with Cheerios, but it's not logical, okay? So the ad that I want you to look at is a two-page ad, and if you go into Readings Etc. on Blackboard, you can find this thing that says Moncler, M-O-N-C-L-E-R, I think, um, ad, and then it says like etc. or something, because it's a, it's a PDF with a bunch of ads in it. So what you can do is pause this video, open that up, and look at it. Now, if you can sc either scroll back and forth between this video and the ad, that's one thing you could do. Or you could open the ad on your laptop and then watch this video on your phone. But it's up to you to figure it out. But I'll let you do that now. Pause. Okay. And so now we're back. And what I'm hoping is that I'll, I'll talk a bit about this ad, but that you're looking at it or you have the ability to scroll to it and check it out as I'm talking about it. Okay. So if we look at this ad at the first page of it, and, and by the way, it's the first two pages of the PDF is the Moncler ad for an orange down jacket. So um, you can see on the first page, that it's mostly an image of this landscape. Um, it's sort of a rocky, mountainous landscape with some sky and clouds. And then you can see a little thing of a couple of hands on the page. And then in the bottom left corner, you see this patch with the company's name and then under it, their website address. If you go to the second page, you can see that in the same landscape, you've got this guy wearing his mirrored sunglasses, wearing the orange jacket, sitting, you know, cross-legged in the dirt, um, etc. Okay, I know I'm leaving out a, a glaring uh, uh, aspect of the image of the guy, but we will get to it. So what I will say is, if we were sitting in a classroom and talking about this, I would take my time and ask you guys questions and, and, but First of all, I have to make this like a 15 minute video tops. Um, so I got to go relatively qu quickly. And, you know, it's not really a discussion. It's mostly me talking. So I might say what some of the questions are, but I'm going to get right to answering them so we can move on. So what I would say is, you know, I think this ad came from a magazine and it was, you know, two pages. It you know, opened out like this. And so on the first of the two is, is mostly just this landscape. And in a way, it's almost like the way the beginning of a novel or the beginning of a movie might set the scene. It's just putting us in this landscape. Um, in a way, it's also just like the, you know, I said a novel or a movie. It's also setting the, creating the setting in which it's going to tell a kind of story, even though it's it's only an image, you know, and you'd be like, how can you tell a story in an image? Well, that's what ads often try to do is is um, in a very small window, whether it's a 30 second commercial or a still ad like this, they try to tell a certain kind of story. And we know it's not going to be a logical story about the qualities of the product because, you know, that I 
intentionally chose one that isn't, doesn't do it that way because we're looking at this phenomenon of pathos-driven advertising. So if we just look at the first page, you know, my one question would be, how would you describe this landscape where the where this story is set? And, um, you know, I think fairly quickly we would get to the fact that it's a barren landscape, that there's no vegetation whatsoever in it. There's no grass, there are no weeds, there are no flowers, there are no trees. Um, it's just dirt, rocks and dirt. Um, you've got some clouds above. There's some sunlight, but there's also a lot of shade. Um, and so, anyway, I'm just describing it here. Now, now in the bottom left-hand corner, yeah, we've got the logo of the company. We've got the web address. That's the only written text in the ad. So, so that's a way of saying this ad makes a visual argument. All, the argument it's making is almost entirely done through just the images. So we've got to figure out what, what are they saying. So if we go to the second page, you know, this guy is in that very same landscape. And one question is, I would uh, looking at him, I would say, how's he doing in that landscape? How does he seem to feel about it? Um, and when I've talked to students about this in the past, some students have said he looks at peace or he looks content or he looks unbothered or unperturbed. Um, he doesn't look ecstatically happy, but he also doesn't look uncomfortable. Now, we, first of all, another important detail is he's by himself. There's no one else around. Oftentimes, if somebody were in, I don't know what you call it, but in the mountains, in the wilderness, in, in the desert, I'm not sure exactly which one of these that is, but, um, uh, something like that, out in the elements. You know, being by yourself makes it particularly tough. Doesn't look tough for him. He looks at peace. Now, it could you could then raise the question of like, okay, it, it looks it looks a, a, a tad forbidding because there's no no there's no vegetation and there's no one else around. Do we know what the temperature is? Um I don't know. There is some sun, but, you know, if you watch a video of people climbing Mount Everest, you know, they could be in sub-zero temperatures or, or very cold temperatures at times, and there's, there's sun. So it doesn't mean that there's sun, that it's necessarily warm. Um, what I would say is we know it's got to be somewhat cold, um, if he's wearing this down jacket, but at the same time, he's got the down jacket open. He's got the hood up, but he's got the down jacket open. So, and, and he's not wearing gloves. His hands are out. So it's, it's, it's probably cold and yet somehow he's unbothered. Um, now, Going along with this question of um, how difficult is the environment that he's in, you could also say, well, maybe he's been out there a long time because he's got that long beard. And, you know, maybe part of the reason he has the beard is because, you know, he's been camping for a while and, uh, you know, he's not shaving. But then again, he doesn't look terribly dirty. His shoes look a little dirty. Maybe his hands look a little bit dirty. But his face and his hair, like his hair might be a little mussed up, but it's sort of fashionably mussed up. So um, I guess I say this is these are deliberate details. Nothing in an ad like this is there by coincidence. It's all by design. It's so expensive that they work it all out ahead of time and, and um, you know, figure out precisely what the details are going to be because the details are how they're communicating. Um, so I guess it's a way of saying there are things to suggest that he's, he's alone. He's in a, a landscape with no life, no, no vegetation. Um, it's potentially cold. 
he's potentially been out there a long time so much that you know his boots look kind of scuffed and kind of dirty um his pants perhaps also look a little dirty and yet he looks totally at ease and comfortable so of course the comfortable thing it, it could be a quality of the jacket and and um you know you could say that there's potentially some um logos in that respect but if we want to immediately jump to how far away from logos much of this appeal is um you know we could start talking about the arms right all the arms there which is part of what's going to grab your attention as you're flipping through this magazine is what the hell's going on there now i gotta cut to the chase because we don't have a ton of time left but i will just say I don't know if this were, is where your mind goes when you see all these arms, but if we were discussing them in a discussing this in a classroom before very long, I would imagine somebody would think of the images of Hindu gods that you see that have multiple arms, and um, that would raise the question: Well, why would that be in this ad? Well, I wonder if this ad isn't an example of that thing that Naomi Klein talks about in The Persuaders when she talks about pseudo-spiritual advertising. Now, the example she gives of pseudo-spiritual isn't always literally spiritual in the sense of religion, images of religion. It's like Nike's Just Do It or Polaroid uh, says their camera is a social lubricant. I think her point is that they're trying to transcend the object, uh, the objectness of the objects they are trying to sell, and they're trying to make it about a big idea, like with Nike Transcendence through sport, or with Polaroid, the camera is a social lubricant. It's like a big abstract idea that that's ultimately about people and their well-being. That's where I think Naomi Klein gets the pseudo spiritual part. Here, I think they're literally talk like infusing messages messages of spirituality, where by putting those arms on a him, him in a way, they are making him a kind of god. Um, now, you could say that the fact that it's on this white guy camping, it's possible that there's a little playfulness, a little humor that allows them to to dodge the sort of pretentiousness of trying to infuse their jacket with spiritual qualities. But even if that sort of irony or whatever is there, they're still suggesting it. I also think that since they put the beard on him, a beard of wisdom, a lot of Eastern gurus have beards. He's sitting in this meditation-like position. He's got some of his hands open to the universe as as some med meditation positions will recommend. Um, and he's got this air of sort of command and confidence where it seems like they're almost making him into some kind of spiritual, spiritually realized being. The orange jacket. Now, orange makes you think of the sun, which could be a suggestion of how warm it is, it's also going to aesthetically make it pop out from the dull background of the, the gray or brown mountains. But I would also say, in mythology, oftentimes the sun is equated with God, and this, that's just one more thing by making it orange. Um, it's one more thing potentially involving some, some kind of spiritual qualities into this individual. So I guess to sum up, I will just say, largely, this is an ad that's telling a story about this person being extraordinarily at ease, comfortable, confident, self-sufficient, and even having a bit of spiritual transcendent qualities to him. He's enveloped in this jacket that seems to be the most noticeable quality of this and you know um that that would be in a way some kind of 
take I would have on this. And then to, to connect it to the film, I would say it's not really a question of just whether that specific message is in the film, in, in the ads they give in the film, but it's that that fits into the general category of a pathos-driven ad without much logos. I'm going to leave it there now. I hope that helps. Thanks, people.